Hey everybody, Marco, KC2ZMA. Here we go. TYT MD380 tools I programmed into the um, into one of my MD380s. Uh, so this is the experimental firmware, the hack firmware uh, made by uh, Travis Goodspeed. And um, he and I guess a bunch of other guys designed and made uh, MD380 tools. Uh, so this one I already put the firmware in this one. This one here, I still have the stock firmware in this one. Now both of these radios, before I put the firmware in this radio here, actually had, has, if I go into utilities, radio info, version, this is what version firmware it has in there. Um, if you look at the demo screen, which is fast, it actually says the firmware which was in there. Uh, it says D020 there, we just saw. Um, so I want to show you today actually how to. I'm going to flash this one, put the firmware in this one. So all you need is the radio, uh, the drivers for the for the radio USB port, so you can use the regular uh, stock uh, USB programming cable that you use to uh, uh, which call it um, put the coat plug into the radio there, so you can use the same cable there. Um, this is got to be careful there probably is a way of breaking it um, I haven't bricked it yet my other radio but be very careful very cautious um, if you want to flash yours do it at your own risk there I've actually went to this website here I found it on Google uh, here's the address up here uh, and m1 geo m1 geo says M D three eight tools um, and a date and all that. It's a zip file. Download it, put it on the computer, unzip it. You'll see some folder like this. You'll see that and just keep going into it. I have a little bit of an older version. Go to Windows. Okay. So the two things you'll need where it says upgrade this little um, program right here and I actually have the MD380 without GPS I think which one has a GPS I think there's the MD390 uh, so you'll see it says right there it says firmware 2017-04-21 no GPS dot bin that is actual firmware I dumped into the radio um, GPS, I believe, I'm not sure. You'll see where it says with GPS. And that's possibly, I'm not sure, that could be um, the MD390 radio. So I'm going to dump this one in there. Um, this is the same exact one with the same month, day, I put in the other radio. Um, so... Be very careful when you do this. Uh, there is a possibility you could break it. They're cheap, the radios. I didn't really care if I did or not. It's the only way to do it is just try, experiment with. Uh, so, yeah. Let's go ahead and um, do it. Uh, here you go. You see the upgrade program right there. It looks just something like this, the program that actually dumps the firmware in there. So you see some gibberish up here and you should see just like this. Um, there's a lot of confusing things on the internet. If you go to GitHub, um, MD380 tools, a lot of coding and stuff like that. So the website, yeah, it's uh, georgesmart.co it probably uh, gentlemen's from the UK there, uh, but um, 
Yeah, I just Googled it and uh, stumbled into um, the website, which the website, you only see this, <clears throat> you only see the M1GO. Uh, supposedly that's probably his call sign, or I never really looked it up with all that. But um, it's a fantastic build. Uh, fantastic. Um, the way he made it here. What we really need is this. And you need the firmware here. Which I'm going to be choosing this one here. Now you got to put this into firmware um, download. So if I shut it off, you know, you re really, you just, if you turn it on, you're just going to see the screen there. Okay? So this is how you put it into. Um, firmware upload you gotta let the, you gotta press the PTT talk button and the top button and turn on the radio at the same time so hold down these two buttons the PTT talk button and one second PTT talk, talk button and the top button at the same time these two buttons down at the same time, turn it on. See his light here flashing back and forth. Let go of these two buttons. So it's a top button and a PTT talk button here. And now it's you don't see anything on the screen. You won't see, you won't see the screen turn on. You'll just see that. So let me shut it off because I'm going to put the USB in here. Um, put this in here, okay, here we go, let's try it again, we're going to do it again, activate it again, so this button and this button at the same time, turn on the radio, let go, you heard the uh, USB connect to the computer, and the red and green light flashing back and forth, you gotta just let go. You're not gonna see anything on the screen here as of yet. So here we go, programming. This right here. Okay, yeah, that's a good shot right there. Open update file. Okay. And here is the one I'm going to choose is right here. Choose that. Open. You're going to see it in here. Now all you have to do is now click download update file. Here we go. Now you see the nothing on the screen still. But you see the light flashing back and forth. You'll see this up here. It says not responding. All right, if you see that, don't panic. I read a few articles that say that actually that's what's gonna happen. I've read it somewhere on the, I forgot who uh, put that up, but I've read that somewhere. Don't panic if that happens. And it's just gonna, it, it's gonna hang because it takes time. So um, let's just let it go and see what happens. Yeah, it takes time. You'll see the gibberish up here. I remember when I did the other radio, the bar didn't go all the way to the top. To the right and you'll see that just like that gibberish here it says upgrade but the radio still does the same thing push ok now I'm not sure if everything went good we don't know yet I'm gonna shut the radio off unplug it 
and let's see what happens. Hey, it looks good. That worked. Yeah, let's go through the menus a little bit. What's the... Everything looks the same here. If you go to your... You, one thing you see differently is if you go to utilities, now you have the extra MD380 tools. M. Roger Beep. Uh, you know the high-pitched noise that when someone activates a repeater or through the radio? Uh, this does a nice low tone. It's very comfortable to the ear, actually. So enable that. Uh, boot options. Day format. If you go all the way down, talker alias and last heard. Um, I'll show you how that works. I'll do a demonstration on Simplex. Uh, show calls. This, I haven't got this yet to work. You could put user database in here. The 50,000 whoever users will actually, when someone keys up, you'll see the person's um, call sign and a whole bunch of other stuff name uh, but I haven't get that haven't got that up and going yet so show calls I have CPS only uh, which whatever co plug I had in the radio uh, I'm not sure what all this you could have you could put a new DMR ID in there if your buddy wants to use the radio site you could program the side buttons configure reset Backlight is pretty cool. You could go to low level, and I'm not going to see it that well, but I try to put it. You go to low level, it stays on this level. It always stays on. I'm not sure if it actually, it might shorten the battery life a little bit, but I thought this was pretty cool because you always do see the display every time you, uh, you know, using the radio, the radio is on. I'll, I'll put the brightest. Ooh, that is bright. Um, confirm. Yeah, let's. Okay, you can actually, so you can actually see that. If you see, well, it's, hmm, I don't know why I did that. Went, went back low. Anyway, it's okay. Yeah. I'm going to put on simplex, the same simplex. Okay, so we're using 441 triple zero. If you see down here, when I key up my call sign, it's going through my CPU, the CPS. Down the bottom here, you can actually see last heard. Hopefully, I don't know if you can see it that well. Um, so you can see the person's ID and what talk group. I thought that was pretty cool. So if someone else keys a repeater, or someone just keyed a repeater, and if you remember your buddy's uh, ID, <laughs> uh, DMR ID, but um, if you put do put the database, I might show the person's name down there. I'm not sure. That is a pretty neat feature. Uh, but uh, so I haven't really done much with uh, these yet. So now both these radios are. Radios are exactly the same. Uh, yeah, let's do. I'll put it exactly the same. Backlight. Lowest level. Okay. Yep. 
If you do put though, um, go to MD3 Creative Tools, show calls, talk, use a database. Now, if someone now if you put the database into the radio and someone keys, it will show everything in that display right there. But ID is unknown, and it tells you where to go to. But um, I just have um, use my CPS. I programmed about 31, 32 contacts from my local area around here. Um, my local repeater. So I just leave it like this. So there we go. So just be careful when you do it. If you have a um, put firmware, so two of them really successful. I made out with it. <laughs> So, uh, thanks for watching. I'll make some other videos and um, I'm going to do more experiments with this. Um, I've been messing around with the Baofeng DM5R. I'll be I'll putting a video of that together and showing you the CPS and how to program the Baofeng. So, the next video you should see is um, the Baofeng uh, DM5R. Uh, and I'll show you the CPS and where you get the software and all that. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, give me a thumbs up. And um, thanks for all your support of, uh, of uh, likes and um, sharing videos. And I got a lot of hits on some of the videos, uh, which is pretty cool. Thanks for watching, everybody.